Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to teach you calculus through ideas of physics, and you don't have to know any calculus to start with. So this is a really crucial, important lesson where we're going to link some ideas that we've been talking about in our physics classes to concepts of calculus, and the calculus is going to help us to better understand some really key ideas. So first of all, we do need to review what we mean by work. Work in a physics sense is equal to the force parallel to an object in motion times the displacement through which that force applies. So we could say work is force parallel times d, where d is like a change in x, and we can even also use r as a variable here to talk about this, as we'll see in a minute. But I do want to start thinking about something that you already know about, and so that is this. If we were to take a graph and to plot the force parallel to the position down here in the x-axis, you could say that this area right here is going to be equal to force parallel times x or force parallel times d, and we're saying force parallel times d is equal to work, right? So it turns out the area of this rectangle is equal to the work. That's a really crucial idea. And in fact, I'm going to argue that we're going to call this the area under the curve. Now you could say, hey, wait up, that's not a curve. And I would agree with you, this is a flat line. But just roll with it for a minute because it will get more complex with time. The area under the curve includes things such as flat lines or straight lines but it also includes more complex functions, as we'll see in a moment. All right, well, what else can we do with this? We can say, well, what if we had a more complex shape to deal with in terms of our graph? What if we had something like this? This is the force parallel that we're working with in the y, and this is our x value, our position value over here, and there's a distance through which that force is applied. This is still going to be work, will still be equal to the area under the curve. How would we get that? Well, we would solve for the area of this triangle right here, the area of this triangle right here, sum them up, and that would be equal to the work that is done on the object. And again, you may not recognize this, but this is actually really, really crucial for understanding physics with work and how to think things through with calculus. Okay, so we're going to say that what if we had an even more complex scenario where the force became negative at some point. So if the force became negative, it would be underneath the x-axis. And the way we would calculate the area under the curve here would be to treat this shape, these two shapes you could say, added together as being positive. And the area under the curve here, this is being negative. So the sum of the areas would be the area under the curve. So this was 100 units, like 100 joules right here. And this was a negative 10 joules right here. The area under the curve for this entire function, which would be shown by this, would be 90 joules in that case. Well, it turns out that life is even more complex than this because forces are rarely constants. They are rarely straight lines, so to speak. And so if we were to plot the force versus position, or force over which the distance through which that force is applied in this axis right here, we often would get a function kind of like this, something that is just not a straight line, much more difficult to deal with. And if I were to ask you, how would we calculate the area under the curve here? It would be hard to do, but you might start to get some ideas. Like maybe we could start approximating with squares or rectangles would be even better. If we have rectangles here, a bunch of rectangles. And what do you think? Would it work better if we had smaller rectangles or larger rectangles if we wanted to get an accurate approximation for the area under the curve. Well, it would work if we would have smaller rectangles. In fact, the smallest width rectangles we could possibly get would give us a better and better approximation of what we're talking about. So let me show you very small rectangles here, but even smaller than this would give us more closer value to the true value of what the area under the curve is. In fact, if you said if we took a limit as you approach zero for the width of these rectangles, you basically could get the area under the curve here, even for a force that is varying with time. Like this could be any function that varies with time. And if we could somehow figure out how to do this in such a way that we would sum up these little boxes of areas right here, we could get the total area and that would tell us the work. Well, calculus allows us to do that with something called integration. So taking an integral, what we would do is we would say work using calculus 
is equal to, this is a summation symbol here. So what this literally means is the sum of the force that is applied over these really tiny, small R values. Think about R could be a substitute for X. They're pretty much synonyms in this case right here. And so that's going to be the force applied over these little tiny boxes. So the area under the curve is this integral right here. So you can take the integral of force with respect to position or the R vector right here, and that will give you the work. All right, so we've talked about work now. Let's apply the same ideas and talk about what's going on with impulse. So impulse, rarely we use the impulse variable over here. It's J, but a lot of times people just write like change in momentum is equal to MV final minus MV initial. And so this is a force applied over a time, not a distance, but a time. So this is similar to work, but not exactly the same. Momentum is not the same clearly as energy. So let's go through the similar reasoning that we just had. What if we had force applied over a certain time? What would the area under the curve be? Well, that would be the impulse right here. And so what if we had a more complex curve? That would be two triangles. Well, we would add up the sum of the area of both triangles of force applied over a time. And that would give us the impulse, the change in momentum of the object. And so we could say, well, what if we had something like this? Again, we could say, if there was a negative area under the curve, we would solve for the area under the curve by treating this area right here as positive, this area down below here is negative. And finally, if we had a much more complex function that is shown like we have over here, we could take the integral or integrate force with respect to time, and that would give us a very, very good approximation of what the impulse would be. And the way we would show that would be something like this. So J could also represent impulse, and that's a change in momentum. And so what do we mean by impulse? We mean impulse is equal to the integral of force with respect to time. So check this out. Now you know conceptually one of the most important ideas in all of calculus, and it's incredibly useful for physics students. So Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.